hello hello welcome back to my channel it's your girl sharon aka the melanin nostalgic runner and we are back for another episode of the real housewives of potomac and this is season nine episode nine and it's called mediation nation and <clears throat> before we get into the episode uh yeah i'm not um gonna be on camera today but you know what there's other days when i will be i think all last week i was pretty good and was on camera the whole time so there's that but anyway, um, that's not why we're here. Without further ado, let's get into the episode. So the episode continues where we left off, where um, Giselle's asking Mia the questions. It's like, girl, the math is not mapping. You tell us one thing. You're crying and consoling us um, just at the GNA event, just to turn around, and then your Instagram is saying something else. And Mia is very annoyed by this. I was a little confused why we decided we we're going to talk to Mia here at this point, but neither here nor there. Um, Mia, of course, is like basically being a stunt queen. And she's like, well, both of the fathers, my children get along. Of course, everyone's gasping and clutching their pearls, but she basically is referring to her first son, which she already stated at the very beginning when she first started on the show. That that's from a previous marriage because Mia has been married before um, and that, um, you know, the other two or Gordon's kid. So even that isn't mapping because we have instances where she's saying that that may not be her kid. But she's saying that it is a kid. Gordon keeps saying it might be Ying's kid. It's a whole entire mess. And so I understand why Giselle is confronting her because Giselle, just like the rest of us, are sick of Mia's lies. Like, and that's that's truthful. Like for for those who have followed me on this channel, I think I've made it pretty clear that I'm not a Mia fan. I never really have been a Mia fan. Um I I know everyone's saying that she's declassing the show, which I do agree with that, but also to a certain degree, Potomac has been a problem for a minute even before Mia. Um, but my whole thing with Mia is, yeah, we don't know what's the truth and what's a lie from her. And I it just kind of gags me that we're just, as a cast, they're finally now confronting her about that, even though that's been a known thing from day one. Um, anyway, so Mia is go like, just kind of like taken aback that she's being confronted. Jacqueline, Mia's representative chimes in. She's like, look, I was there. Cause the thing that they're going back and forth about, about is at, after the GNA event within that same time frame, they're all hanging out as in like Mia, Gordon and Inc at some pool with the kids. And they're just, they look like they're having a time. And um, Jacqueline's like, that's true. One minute they're good and the next minute they're not. And Jazzy, before, you know, the representative, because I'm going to call Jacqueline the representative, chimed in. Jazzy's asking, well, the problem is it looks like you're fronting. You're putting on the front. Like, you're telling us one thing, but social media is saying the complete opposite. And it's confusing. And Kay is giving her grace, like, look. I think Mia's just trying to do the best she can for everyone to coexist. It's just what you thought how it was going to work is not working that way. Hopefully you're aware of that. And um, Karen's confused too because she wasn't there when at the GNA event when all this came up initially. So Karen's like, why are we even bringing this up right now? And so as this is happening, um, Wendy gets summoned saying that she's getting a citation and all of us are confused because we're like a citation, you mean a proclamation? And <laughs> everyone's just like, girl, it's a proclamation, not a citation. And even Karen jokes, she's like, I'm the one that gets citations around here. No one else gets citations, but me. And I kind of cackled a little bit, but at the same time, I'm like, girl, how are you going to say that, but not want to talk about it? And I know why, because again, she's fighting it, but still. If I was her, I wouldn't be joking about it either. I wouldn't even talk about it if, if, if that's not a thing, but whatever. Neither here nor there. So after that, Karen, not Karen, but um, Wendy goes off to um, get this proclamation. And the proclamation is from the governor of Maryland for the work that she does. Because for those who are not aware, um, Wendy um, does a lot for the community. And also she's, you know, pretty heavy in the political arena. Um and, you know, kind of a pretty relevant deal in that area. 
So she's getting basically her props for that. So then next, as the speech is happening, we see that um, Ashley and Stacy are briefly talking about their mediations because both their mediations are coming right up. And then they kind of stop briefly because they're, they were literally talking while like um, Wendy's supposed to be getting her stuff. And so they're like, hold up, let's put, let's put a pin in that. And, they, and then they did. And then while this is happening, um, Stacy goes and sits back with TJ and she's trying to tell everyone who's who in the room. And TJ just seems so disinterested, but I'm also kind of annoyed because it's like, okay, I get what this is. You have all the connections around here. You're the person that is important to get close to around here. And TJ's taking advantage of that. I'm sorry for the, I don't know if there's anyone who's fam TJ on this channel who follows me, but it's like, but this did not help. It basically made it look like that TJ is the opportunist, and I feel like he is. But that's neither here nor there. So then, as this is happening, we see that Ashley goes to Giselle, Karen, and Karen and is like, look, we need to talk to um, Stacy. It feels like she's going into this mediation blindly, and was, and was. And so afterwards, they all go up to Stacy's like, hey, let's come, let's come chat with us. Let's have a conversation. And yeah, she was basically expecting it to be sprinkles and butterflies and everything will be fine. Like they're going to, because they amicably split, everything should be good. But then we come to find out this girl doesn't, is, and we kind of already knew this about Stacy. We're seeing a pattern here. Stacy is very naive and I'm quite confused. Um, she did state, I think they're, you know, married for, were they married for 10, 15 years or something like that? I don't know how long they've been married, but they've been married for a while. So I'm getting the tease that Stacy got married at a young age and to this rich, powerful man who's from Germany. And, but before all that happened, she didn't really, she probably was a goody two shoes. Well, there's no probably. I feel like she was a goody two shoes and didn't really get herself in trouble and doesn't, hasn't really lived much of a life. And why I mean like a life, um, I mean like the street smart, smart experience, which would give you common sense. Um, sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's not. I mean, but if you take it with stride and, you know, ha and you, you know, go with it, you really kind of get those lessons, you know, that you need to learn. And a lot of times that really happens when you're someone who's kind of an independent person. But if she got married at a pretty young age... I could see how all that would get missed. And so we find out later on the whys and how specific she's kind of in over her head on. But um, basically the ladies, they are not trying to be messy for once. I feel like none of them were. They were actually coming from a place like, look, we have all been divorced. So Karen and Giselle have been divorced before. And so they are like, you have to like do your homework. I would recommend getting a lawyer. Don't, you know, be a total shrew and just assume things are going to go left, but just be prepared because you, you're going to find out some things that you were not aware of. And, you know, Stacey's like, I know my husband, there's no way that would be a thing. And then Karen with the valid points, this whole episode, when it comes to these things, she's like, if y'all grew apart, then you don't know your husband. And, and that, that is a word right there. If you're growing apart, you don't know the person who you're dealing with anymore. It's that simple. And so, um, Stacy's still like, you know what, we'll see. And that's kind of where that ends. Side note, it is kind of interesting that we have a lot of women on these shows, at least this go around, they're going through divorces, mediations, and things like that. Like we have PK, we have PK and Dorit. We have Kyle and Mauricio on um, Beverly Hills. And then on this side, on the side of Potomac, we have Ashley and Michael, which that has been the song that never ends. It's been one of those. And then we have um, Stacy and her ex-husband, whose name we do not know. Um, but I just find that interesting in everyone's approach to it. And I feel like Ashley knew who she was dealing with, so that was not as hard of a problem for her. Although, that's not true. 
I think we're finding out, at least in this episode, why it took her so long. She is using, she is, and it's very clear to me, she's using this season to drive home the reason why it took her so long um, because she's been criticized for, you know, this is now the third season that we're talking about the divorce. So, um, yeah, that's kind of, I, I find out she's using this to clean up, but hopefully Ashley girl, quit dragging your feet, get to the end, get to the whole entire finish line. And don't try to use you following, because side note, if you don't follow what's been going on, spoiler, 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 this is not tied to the show. You know I don't normally do this, but I'm going to say it. Ashley did indeed, they did file for divorce officially. We found that out. And if this was shortly after Ashley's Watch What Happens Live um, showing, where Andy was basically putting the pressure on her of like, girl, either shit or get off the pot, basically. And so that's what we got going on um anyway so i i'm just concerned that she's going to then use her because her filing the divorce does not mean divorce is finalized we do not need a whole season of next season where you're going to do that or not no the conclusion better be at the reunion and then you see yourself you see your way off the show after this because girl it's not giving what you think it's supposed to be given but anyway that's <laughs> um the next thing that we see because we're still at the party um so i want to wrap this whole thing up so eddie and wendy after commensurating and dealing with the ladies they do finally get to we do, do finally see wendy talking to her family well, really not her family eddie's family and by eddie's family i mean her his siblings they're there and it is a pretty emotional thing because they have not dealt with each other for years. Like this was actually, this scene was the first time that her kids, AKA her um, husband's um, siblings meeting their nieces and nephews, basically their niece and nephews. Like that's crazy. So it was a pretty emotional scene. And um, hopefully this does start um you know resolving the whole entire issue of them not reconciling and being together like they, they i i still and i'm hopefully this season we get to the bottom of what caused this rift because we've never really gotten a true answer to what caused this other than the fact that wendy and eddie got married what was the reason why this was a problem anyway so then next, uh, we have um, Giselle and Grace. So Grace is back um, from school. Well, this is summer break. And so this is um, after Grace's first full semester in college. And, um, you know, Giselle's kind of just getting some pointers, um, kind of getting Grace caught up on what's been happening. So one, she's asking Grace, which one, the twins, do you think may be in, you know, maybe in over their head It might be, a little bit um having a tougher time um acclimating to college i forgot which one they i think they said the door will probably be the one who has like the issues and i'm, I'm assuming and i don't remember i think a door is the more introverted twin um the extroverted twin i seems like it'll be a little bit more seamless but that's where grace is thinking is going to be a thing and then um also, the other thing that was mentioned was that um, they talked through is how really Giselle leaned it leaned on her girls when the situation with her dad suddenly passing away happened because she, in a rare moment, we're actually hearing Giselle being vulnerable. She states like, you know, when it came time to book the, the flight to go see my dad again, after knowing the news was not going to be good because he was basically up until he basically passed away shortly after he was calling her every day. And then all of a sudden the calls just stopped. So she knew this was not good. And she couldn't even like book the flight or anything like that. She totally froze at this moment. So Jamal Bryant actually booked the flight for her while the kids helped get her together because they called they ended up calling jamal the kids did to help get things together and they basically had to take over like she kind of just shut down and this might actually explain why 
explains why we do not see Giselle in a vulnerable state because I think the way she deals with conflict, like actually when it's something that really bothers her, is she's the type that shuts down. Um, and we even see it though, even when it comes to conflict on the show. She doesn't go, she's not the type that reacts right away. She has to process it and then react. Um, which a lot of times can give a deer in the headlights type look and it could come off that way. Um, so it seems like that's kind of what happened there. And Giselle also explained how she just did not really want to talk to Grace about everything that was going on because she wanted Grace to be able to enjoy her first year in college and being truly independent and not have that extra worry of what was going on at home. And I, I get that. I felt that. Um, anyway, this was a cute scene because I always love seeing Giselle with Grace. And I also just love the fact that you can tell in this scene that now Giselle is seeing Grace as a, as a grown woman. So I'm loving how it went from Grace being like, and of course still her daughter, but like a little girl to like now they're like talking almost like their peers because it's like, you know, the adult relationship with your parents and it, it's nice to see. Okay, next we see Ashley getting ready with her boys. Um, she's taking her boys to camp, um, summer camp, and then she's going to mediation. And you could tell Ashley is truly freaking out about it. And, you know, I've been giving Ashley a hard time because I don't really like Ashley. But I am starting to buy it. <laughs> and hopefully, Ashley, you better not give me a reason to regret this. But I think Ashley really does want to be off this, uh, like, want this man off of her. I can see it. Um, she wants to be done with it. But I don't think it's for the reasons we really think it's for. I partially am thinking, and this is me putting my psychology hat on. For those who don't know, I actually do have a minor in psychology. My first major was a psychology major before I switched it. Um, anyway, my theory, though, is that I think she's also using this as a motivation to hopefully get Sheila to leave her good-for-nothing man. Because... Ideally, if Ashley can leave a man who basically, you know, is a one percenter essentially, why is Sheila still with this dude who is like, you know, ain't ish basically? And so I think she is using that as another motivational tool to leave this man. Um, I will say at first when we heard about the divorce and all that, we didn't believe it. And I mean, I didn't believe it mainly because I thought it was a way to, um, I've always found it. I always thought it was a reason to basically find a way to keep her on the show. I feel like that's what she was doing. And we know that her ex-husband does not like her on this show because his business gets put out on front street. So he doesn't really like it. And also, too, because he's a crude, horrible person. I mean, he, you know, he's, he has some, he has some accusations on him basically SAing people like on the show. Um, and I mean, behind the scenes, it's like allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. So I don't know. I, I'm still kind of on the fence about what's happening here, but Ashley does state she doesn't even want to see him. She doesn't want to look at him, but she needs to get this done to figure out what's going to happen. And her concerns are also that she's afraid that she's not looking forward to not being able to see her boys as regularly as she used to. And that's really the only thing that she's thinking about when it comes to that. But... We do find out later on, child, a curveball happened, but we're like, but we're really, really when we talk about, it, we shouldn't even be surprised. But anyway, that's all that kind of is happening here. Next, we have this scene with Kiana and Greg, and we kind of get to see their dynamic for the first time ever. And I don't know how I feel about this dynamic. I'm a little, I don't know. I'm a little concerned. I am a little concerned because KK is a lot like me, very independent, giving boss B like that kind of girl. And she actually is at this um, 
mental health thing, helping out her husband, uh, not even her husband. Wow. See, that was a Ferodian slip. And that's the other thing that I'm probably, that's part of the reason why I'm having an issue. Um, she's helping out her boyfriend, but her boyfriend is very okay with bossing her around. Um, and she's used to being her own boss. And we find out from KK that like her, um, uh, Greg is very much the type. He's a little old school when it comes to the dynamics of it all. And unless that gets addressed prior to a ring on the finger and whatnot, I don't know how that's going to work. But at the same time, how is that going to get addressed if you're already going to be moving in with him? Like, these are the things that should have been a conversation before you decided you're going to move in with this man. So I am a little concerned. I'm not sure how they're going to work. But we do shift gears. And again, at the end of the day, it's not my business. If you like it, I love it. But I, it did kind of give me pause. So we switch gears and Kay does talk about her lawsuit that she has against Sesame Street. And um, according to her, things are going well. And she's not having as much of the nightmares and things that came with it. And apparently this was a pretty traumatic event for both of them because, you know, he's had fears of that, of her being like jumped. Like, I guess I'm not sure why he would have those fears, but maybe because she's very feisty and very independent. Maybe that's just a fear that you would have. I don't know. I would need to talk to a guy in the situation would think that. Um, but then also too, she had, you know, this did cost her time away from work, um, having to, it, it was traumatic because I mean, she literally got hit in the head by glass because this woman threw glass at her. So, um, cause Greg is just kind of apprehensive basically about her being on the show because these are the women that are kind of responsible for that happening and not really all the women one particular person that we will don't need a name, um, Ashley. Um, but yeah, anyway, without, but outside of this, that's kind of all that happens with this scene. Okay. So next we have Giselle, Karen, Ashley, Deb, sorry, not Debbie. Wow. Wendy and, um, Stacy, they do meet up for like a lunch and drink situation. And, um, they're basically recapping what happened between the mediations of it all. So Stacy went first and she actually did commend the women for actually giving her sound advice because she did decide to go in there with the lawyer and she did ask a lot more questions, um, that she probably would not have asked originally. And she even stated that she was like, if it wasn't for them, I probably would have not have asked the questions that I asked, but she did find out a lot more than what she bargained for. Um, like she found out about these accounts that she didn't know about things in her name that she didn't know about a whole bunch of things like that. And the reason why she found this out, and this is why I was just thinking to myself, like, girl, how are you not going to follow their advice is the fact that she is kind of was in that they had a traditional role when it came to their, to their marriage. She was basically the homemaker of it all. I mean, she had a career on the side. Of course she had a career, but she was pretty much like kind of like the homemaker while he made all the money because her QVC check is not the same type of check of what kind of money he's on. He's on some old, old money. It sounds like from what I'm, from what I'm gathering. And so she doesn't know how the bills are getting paid. She doesn't know any of that stuff. Like, and um, I'm glad that the ladies gave her sound advice. Like, girl, you got to know where, how your money's being spent and all that. And she was like, yeah. And she agrees. She's like, I need to do a better job of figuring that out. Especially now, once we're divorced, I'm going to need to know how to, you know, manage all this stuff on my own. And Wendy says the same thing. She's like, you know what? Truthfully, I'll be honest with you. I don't know what my mortgage looks like. I don't even know how much my mortgage is. I don't even know what electric company we're using. Like, you know, Eddie takes care of all of that, but not that I think that we're ever going to get a divorce, but I should probably be paying attention to what's happening so that, you know, and, and that is sound and ever, and you know, and Giselle's like, yeah, you do need to pay attention to that. And it's not even for the divorce factor. It's like, what if something happens to Eddie? What is she going to do? Like, that's just one of those things that you have to be 
cognizant and aware of that. And Wendy stated, you know, in, in a certain way, she's like, well, because I'm taking care of the kids, I know everything's going on with the kids. Why, you know, this is kind of the reason why I went into my role. And I, I imagine it's very, this is a very common traditional dynamic. So I know that is still a thing, but I, you know, because with divorce rates at all time high and life be life thing, and you just never know if someone's going to make it home. It just seems very irresponsible to a certain degree to not be paying attention to these things. So if anything, I'm glad that this conversation's out there because it is even, I love, and I also love that Wendy gave a different perspective as someone who is married, who just needs to do a better job of paying attention to this stuff. Um, so then from there, we move on to Ashley. Um, cause also we also did find out from, um, um, Stacy's mediation. She's going to have a couple more meetings. Um, they, they had it where they have multiple ones scheduled to basically settle things out. So it's not going to be just a one and done. Unlike Ashley's, Ashley's was a one and done and it did not go well. Um, and for those who've been paying attention to the shows and basically been paying attention to how Michael's been moving, we should not be surprised on what his request was, which Ashley was not going to agree with. And the question was, and basically the conditions of their divorce was that um, a non-disclosure agreement, but like in perpetuity. So like forever. Um, and Ashley's like, oh no, I can't agree to that. Like I'm on this show. And because it's basically tied to the show, he does not want to be mentioned or addressed or talked about on this show ever again, even though that is literally part of her life, which is one of the main reasons why Ashley being on the show still has been a problem for her. Because I think last season he threatened to sue her if, he was mentioned much in or any negative way or even being put on a camera on this show. So this show has been a contentious issue of Ashley's and that dirtbag that's Michael this whole entire time. And, um, which is problematic for her because it's literally how she makes money. Like this is like her main income. Clearly, um, she's a day one on this show. And so she's not going to agree to that. And so as this is happening, as she's talking about it, she was like, yeah, so I either have to file a complaint and, um, and then, you know, Wendy asked like, what does that mean? She's like, well, that means all of her business will be on front street. Like, well, I'll have to air it all out, like everything. Or the other option is just have the lawyers negotiate a, some type of agreement behind the scenes. And then they come to agreement that way. And Ashley's, of course, hoping for the lawyer situation to happen versus the other. And um, fast forward, we know that did happen. So anyway, but then the confessional Karen, who just been on one when it comes up, this whole entire situation, she's like, if he wants you to be quiet and he's willing to pay, Ashley, that's called alimony. Make him run it up. She's like, make him run it up. And child, I ain't gonna hold you. I kind of agree, I agree completely with Karen. I don't need to be on this show. Run if you are the one percenter that you claim to be. Run that shmoney all the way up in perpetuity so that I won't say a word. I'll leave the show in that case. And honestly, I'm not. I will not be surprised during the reunion if that is the unveil that she's leaving the show because she did agree to that agreement. And she uses that and she used that agreement to leverage her amazing alimony for like ever. Cause I would, I would have done it that way, but who knows if she could do it that way because you know, he's the one that has the money. He's probably the ones that has the lawyers and all that good stuff. But anyway, that's it for that. So the next we have this brief scene with Karen and Raven and I love this scene because Raven Oh my gosh, she is thriving in New York. So she does marketing and she just, I guess, landed this deal where she, or just closed this deal with Amazon. And this is one of her best deals that she's ever had. And they're just having the mother daughter day. And she literally flew in for lunch and she's flying back to um, New York before she flies to do something else. So she is basically living the dream that Karen is living vicariously through as she states. And outside of this, 
it was the similar situation. This scene was very similar to her and um, her um, nephew. I forgot his name, but it was a very similar situation. They're still referring to his accident. And Raven's, of course, on her mom's side. Like, if they don't support you through what's going on, they're not your friends. And the whole conversation of her needing to be strong for others, but not strong for herself. That was the gist of this conversation. And to be honest, until we get more transparency from Karen on what really happened, um, because it was documented what happened, allegedly, um, I don't really have anything else to say when it comes to this scene other than it was nice to see Raven. Anyway. Okay, so then next we have this brief scene that we could have just kept in the cutting room floor, but we did that. Um, I guess it was a reason for um, Jacqueline to be seen. Basically... Mia takes Jacqueline shopping for new clothes because a girl can't dress. Um, and then, of course, Mia shades um, Giselle for not being able to dress. But at the end of the day, really none of y'all can dress outside of Karen, um, KK, um, Jazzy, um, Stacy, and Wendy. Wendy is the fashion girly of this show. And then prior to that, Candace. But Candace was a hit and miss, but she would at least would take a fashion risk. But anyway um but the rest of the girls child they can't dress so i don't even know why we're having this conversation including mia mia cannot dress she's giving stripper chic and that's what she gives and of course the outfit that she lands on for um jacqueline to wear is basically stripper chic it looks like something that would be from like Shein. i ain't gonna hold you but anyway they talk about um jackie and her relationship with mr pp apparently they're trying to work it out yet again this is like the seventh or eighth time they've done this stuff thing this type of thing so it's kind of like okay whatever and then after that then the other thing that happens is that um mia states that she was pretty upset with how giselle decides to put her business out there and is obsessed with her social media basically changing the narrative of what giselle's upset about and it's not really that it's really that giselle's upset that you're a liar but i have a probably unpopular but popular opinion not sure what it is giselle is the right message wrong messenger <laughs> and i think later on in this episode if we had someone who actually read better than her i don't know candace um she she could have got she would have been able to get but got put together but mia can't read so it didn't land for me towards the end but we'll get to that Anyway, um, Mia's basically stating to Jacqueline, I am going to address it with Giselle when, on how I felt. Next, we have this event that Ashley invites everyone to. And it's actually a charity event um, that's supposed to help people that are homeless in the community and stuff. And apparently she's been working with this um, charity for some time now because, you know, she actually was someone who, if you know Ashley's story, she was um on the verge of being homeless growing up because of her mom and her not so great choices and so um this charity means a lot to her but it was cute because when it came to this charitable event besides what she is doing which what ashley's doing when it comes to this event is she's actually going to be scaling a wall um basically repelling down off a wall um from and not a wall the building <laughs> The outside building. I, I don't know why I said a wall. Um, it is a wall, but it's the wall of the building. Um, but like the whole entire building, like from outside. So it actually was quite terrifying seeing this because I am afraid of heights. But I also feel like I could maybe do this, but I don't know. I'm okay. So for those who don't know, I've actually have repelled before, like down things. And while I was in like when I was in JROTC, because for a second I thought I was gonna be in the military, and I decided, oh no, <laughs> we're not gonna do that. I don't like being told what to do. But um, yeah, so I did. I actually did join JROTC mainly so I could just repel off this wall that was like at my high school. Um, it was high off the off the ground, but it wasn't like the people are ants high off the ground. It was high enough where if you were to fall, you would you would break something for sure. Because it was probably like I would say three stories long, maybe four. 
this was a skyscraper that Ashley was doing. So I was like, oh, Lord. Anyway, so while this is happening, though, her kids are there. And everyone else who has, like, younger kids all were there minus media's kids. So it was kind of a cute, fun event. Very cutesy, very demure. Um, I don't remember if Jazzy was there or Jacqueline was there. I don't remember seeing them in this scene. Neither here nor there. But basically the main thing is Ashley did end up scaling a wall. Um, and then after all that happened, then the showdown between Giselle and Mia occurred. Mia immediately confronts Giselle about how like she needs to not be in her business and all this other stuff. And in her confessional, by the way, Mia this whole entire time is spending it to like Giselle saying that she's a bad mom. And that's not what she's ever said this whole entire time. But she's spending it that way. And you, it's very clear to me that Mia's target is Giselle because she knows she can't really do nothing when it comes to like Karen. Um, so she, she switched to Giselle instead. And because when she's complaining about how like Giselle are saying all these things about her, it has not been just, just Giselle. It's also been Karen. Um, and it's been some of the other ladies too. So it's not like it's a Giselle only thing. It's just Giselle was bold enough to say all that to your face. I'm like, girl, what are you doing? And the kids have only been mentioned initially in that first episode. They were never mentioned again. And, and well, until Mia decides she's going to bring the kids into it, but she brought it, she brought the kids into it in a gutter, a gutter snipe type of way. Um, and she's like, you know, you did all this, did all this and do all this. And you're airing all my stuff out. But yet I didn't air your stuff out when your daughter was sneaking boys, like, you know, into the house while we were in the DR. And I was like, Oh, we're doing that now. And what's messed up about this, but in the same way, <laughs> the fact that as Giselle, I do not feel as bad because Giselle is known to do these type of things herself. It's just, she's in a very messed up way, getting a taste of her own medicine. Cause let's be real. If this was a Mia and this is someone else who's a lot more likable and who actually could read doing this to Giselle. Okay. Let's okay. Let's put this. If this was Karen confronting Giselle, will we feel away? No, we will be okay with it. But because it's actually Mia, which people, a lot of people dislike Mia more than they dislike Giselle. It's not landing the way Mia probably thinks is landing. Also too, Mia can't read. And she also brought the kids into it out of nowhere. There's plenty of other examples of Giselle being a hypocrite that you could have brought up. You didn't need to bring this up. And the reason why this was a problem is because this was something that Giselle shared with Mia outside the show. She did not say this on the show at all. Like she didn't, I think she said it even behind cameras. And that's kind of a housewives as a whole no-no. You don't bring something into the forefront that was not out there already or you know not on the show and mia doesn't make sense doing this because at least what giselle was confronting you about was something that you put out there giselle did not put anything out there when it comes to her kids and she's actually the way this is coming off is how it is she's targeting giselle's kids and yes her kids are basically grown kids but still the kids were not part of this there's no reason why they got brought into it and so Giselle's like, I'm processing all this, but once I react, I am going to react. So Giselle is kind of keeping, keeping on mute, but she's, she's, she's going to have a plan. And as this is happening, Karen's also like, this is not cool. Why are we bringing the kids into this? And same thing with even like, um, um, Wendy. Like you don't bring kids into it out of nowhere. So this was kind of a messed up thing across the board. And me and the whole entire time is like, you don't like it when it happens to you, do you? You don't like it when it happens to you. And I don't remember Giselle ever bringing people's kids into it. And I'm not trying to be an advocate because Giselle has done some vile things or just as bad and not worse, um, i.e. Candace. But I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. Because like, if it wasn't Giselle, I wouldn't. I would feel like, oh my gosh, this is messed up that she did this. But because it's Giselle, I don't feel as bad. So it's kind of a weird stalemate 
of two people who are very hip hypocritical because the main thing that Mia was trying to bring home and she could have did it a different way and it probably would came out a lot nicer is that Mia is sharing her authentic life, which is debatable. We don't believe that. So that's kind of part of the problem there. But Giselle is not. Giselle is trying to come off as perfect when we know she's not. But the thing is, that has been the knock when it comes to Giselle the whole entire time. We all know that. Giselle is very giving, you know, she does not put out there what's really going on with her. So therefore, that's why Giselle throughout the years has always been other people's business so that we're never in her business. So we know that to be true. It's just, again, it's Mia delivering points that are correct points and the way she did it, which was low. But because of Giselle, it actually makes sense she would do that. And then on the other side, Giselle is correct to what she's saying because Mia be lying. But it's like, girl, you're doing the same thing, but in a different way. And then also you've done some vile things. So like the fact that you're trying to critique someone else from doing vile things when you yourself have also done vile things is very hypocritical. So I don't know how I feel. I'm just kind of like, oh, I'm just... I guess I'm just getting my popcorn ready to see what happens because based off that mid-season trailer, it looks like it's going to be Mia versus everybody towards the end. But we'll see if that's what's really giving. But that does conclude the episode for today. Um, I didn't think this was going to be a long review, but got child, I imagined I did end up stretching it. But anyway, um, we'll see you next time. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye. I'm in